All right, time now for another edition of Ask a Doc. We're joined now by Jerry Culver, and Jerry's with Central Nebraska Home Care in Kearney, and tonight we're talking, Jerry, about a condition known as RSV. Thanks so much for being with us, first of all. You're welcome. Tell us a little about RSV. It's, it's kind of confused to some folks as the common cold, am I right? That's correct, and we're, it's kind of timely that we're talking about this this time of year because this is the time of year that we usually see community outbreaks. Mm. Um, RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus. I can never s pronounce that. Um, it Better than I could do. And it's responsible for most cases of bronchiolitis and pneumonia in, in babies. It's more common in the winter and the spring months. Mm -hmm. it, uh, like I said, it, it occurs in outbreaks in communities. It can be serious in children who are less than six months of age, uh, born prematurely, or have compromised immune systems. And also with um, certain uh, heart heart conditions and lung conditions. Okay. What are we talking about when we talk about treating this uh, RSV? What's that all about? Well, most cases are mild and you treat it just like the common cold. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it requires hospitalization in those high-risk um, infants that we talked about. In rare cases, supplemental oxygen is used. Bronchodilator medication um, that dilate the lower airways, open them up wider so, so the child can breathe and, and eliminate some of those respiratory complications we talked about. And in some cases, um, antiviral medications. The symptoms are very similar to the common cold. Yeah. You have the runny nose, um, you, you might have um, fever, poor feeding. What you're looking for um, are the complications and the respiratory types of problems you see associated with RSV, which is wheezing, retraction of the chest, which is pulling into the chest wall, rapid breathing, and, and cough. Mm -hmm. Now, Central Nebraska Home Care, who you're with, um, you have some items that can maybe help out a little bit yeah. with this, right? We, we play a small role in that we provide the equipment that administers the breathing medications that dilate the, the lower air, airways. It's called a nebulizer compressor, okay. and um, we rent that or we sell it, mm -hmm. and the medication is delivered through a nebulizer, and we've got cute little um, nebulizer masks for the the kiddos to wear, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit fun and a little bit less intimidating for the, the, them to wear. So we provide the, the equipment that generates the, the powers the, the, the aerosolized nebulizer here, and it creates a mist of the medication. They breathe it in, and we always say if, they're, if the kid is crying, it's getting down deeper where it needs to be. So mm -hmm. that's not necessarily a bad thing if the kid cries when you, you administer the medication. Yeah, it's kind of cute. You're right. They do make that kind of kid-friendly, don't they? That's good. You bet. Jerry, talk about uh, prevention just a little bit. We got a few seconds here. Well, you know, like Sam the Moose, a good Sam, always right. says the most important part of, of preventing illness is washing your hands. And mm -hmm. so, refer to the the jingle that Sam the Moose does, or you, we've all seen the commercials. Um, but wash your hands um, frequently, mm -hmm. especially during this time of year. And if other siblings in the house have common colds, it might be a good idea to separate the older kids from the newborn infants if they're have, having symptoms of a cold. Um, this virus is kind of nasty. It can it, it can live on, on surfaces. It's passed from um, touch mm -hmm. and um, droplet transmission, which is coughing and sneezing. So, you know, cover your, your mouth and nose. Jerry Culver, some great tips. Thanks so much for being with us. And still to come tonight, it took a long